Welcome to the Biden for President virtual rally in Tampa, Florida. Thank you for joining. Our program will begin shortly. Welcome the chair of the Florida Democratic Party, Terry Rizzo. Hello, Florida Democrats. Hello, Tampa and all my fellow Floridians from all across the Sunshine State. While we can't be together right now, that doesn't mean we're apart. Together, we're all facing this unprecedented pandemic. And I hope that everyone is safe and that you and your families and loved ones are all doing well. Today, we see our nation struggling against the pandemic led by a president who cannot do the job. Under Donald Trump, we are sicker, poorer, and more divided than ever. But there's hope for America, and that hope is Joe Biden. We have hope because Joe Biden knows how to get our country out of a recession and tackle a healthcare crisis. He's done it before. No one is more qualified to get us back on track than Joe, the man who helped pass the landmark Affordable Care Act and led us out of the Great Recession. We have hope because Joe Biden is running on the most progressive agenda of any president in the past 50 years. He's committed to, to defeating our planet's existential crisis, the climate crisis, and he's running to rebuild the American middle class and make sure this time everybody come along. We know this year Florida is one of the most important battleground states in the nation. The road to the right house goes directly through Florida. Donald Trump knows that, and he knows if he loses Florida, he loses the White House. Game over. We also have hope because our volunteers and staff have laid the groundwork to win. Over this past year, the Florida Democratic Party has been working hard to build the state party that Joe needs to defeat Donald Trump. We've built the biggest staff in the entire country and have trained and engaged tens of thousands of volunteers all working on a program to expand vote by mail and register voters. And I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to our terrific county parties and volunteers. In less than a year, we've already enrolled and registered nearly 100,000 voters in the state. And when you win or lose by just a few thousand votes, this is the difference maker. We know that Joe Biden and the Florida Democratic Party are going to turn Florida blue in November. So tonight, I am so proud to see my friend, Joe Biden, as our nominee for president, joining us for this virtual rally, the first virtual rally in the campaign. With Joe Biden in the White House, we can tackle the challenges we face, not as red states or blue states, but as one nation. Florida Democrats, there are now exactly 180 days to election day on November 3rd. Let's roll up our sleeves, let's get to work, and let's elect Joe Biden as the 46th president of the United States. Go, Joe. To lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance from Jesuit High School, please welcome Jack Kirk. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please welcome Biden for President, Florida Regional Organizing Director, Larry Bowden. Greetings, Tampa. I'm Larry Bowden. I'm from the thriving metropolis of Lake City here in Florida. I've been on this campaign for almost a year now. And over that time, we've seen uh, Vice President Biden been knocked down, cast aside, and counted out. But he's continued to fight, but not only fight, but fight with the same integrity from day one. And the voters here in Florida stood by him the entire time through it all. 
no matter what has been thrown at him, he's continued to take it in stride and never once wavered in his belief that the American people deserve a president they can trust and evident now more than ever, we need leadership who can remain calm under the pressures of the presidency. And it might not hurt to have a president who believes in science, especially for us Floridians. Supporters like you have gotten us to the point where we are today. From making phone calls, sending texts, and even just talking to your neighbors about the VP. Right now, we are focused on connecting with each of you, all of our supporters, checking in with them to see how they're doing and making sure that they can get involved with the campaign if they are willing and able. So text ORGANIZE to 30330 if you're able to join our campaign and take action. We'll ask you to help by simply hosting a virtual event with friends and neighbors and invite them to the campaign. If it's your first time or your 46th time, we'll be with you every step of the way. Or make calls to other known supporters and check in on them to make sure that they know what's going on with the campaign and how they can also get involved. We have a lot of folks to talk to and we need your support. Thank you, Tampa. From Funkman Productions, please welcome Before DJ I Jack Enriquez. If you ever been held down before, I know you refuse to be held down anymore. Don't you let me in your way. Stand in your way. Hey, hey. Don't you listen, listen. To every word I say, every word I say. Welcome Florida State Senator Janet Cruz. Hey, uh, Biden team and Joe Biden, welcome to our beloved hometown, Tampa. It's a wonderful place to be, and it's great to be with all of you, even though only virtually tonight, on behalf of our next president, Joe Biden. And I've been on Joe's team from the beginning because I know Joe has the experience and the heart to be our next president. And I know that he could win Florida because Florida believes in Joe and Joe believes in Florida. He knows the issues we care about and he's delivered on them from climate change to gun violence to health care. In January, Joe Biden stood in solidarity with me and my fellow legislators and Florida Democrats. And he supported our agenda to better fund our public schools, to fight climate change, and to build a democracy that everyone in Florida can participate in. Now it is time for us to stand with him to make Donald Trump a one-term president. This pandemic has shown just how important 
and how dire it is to get Joe Biden elected. Here in Florida, we are feeling the pain of this pandemic, in large part due to a failure in leadership, due to a leader, a governor that's following everything that Trump tells him, whether it makes sense or not. We also have an attorney general who's fighting in lockstep with the Trump administration to dismantle the Affordable Health Care Act in the Supreme Court and, and amid a public health crisis, they move forward with this. Floridians deserve a president who will treat health care as a right <clears throat> and not a privilege. And that's Joe Biden. As we face this public health crisis, Joe has called for us for, for making not just all COVID-19 testing, but all treatment and any vaccine for COVID-19 free regardless of whether someone's insured or not. His plan to build and expand on the affordable health care will cover an additional 20 million Americans and protect more than 100 million Americans with pre-existing conditions. So even as many of us continue to practice social distancing, I'm asking everyone tuned in to take action. The stakes are way too high. Um, we can do this virtual um, live stream for Biden today, and we can do the rest of it this way too. Just go to JoeBiden.com and find a way to get involved. I don't want to say unbelievable anymore, but who said unbelievable when President Trump, Trump mocked the disabled? Who said unbelievable when Trump demeaned women? And holy moly, who said Trump is unbelievable when he denied that the COVID was anything more than a flu. And then to top it all off, who said unbelievable when Trump told us or suggested that people could ingest disinfectants to kill the coronavirus? Unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you what we need to restore the confidence of the American people to restore the confidence of the White House, and that is believable Biden. So join me as we move forward with a man that we can believe in and respect and help me return respect and confidence to the White House. Let's win in November. Thank you all. Please welcome former Governor Congressman Charlie Crist. Good to see you. Thank you all for being here tonight. This is a great time to have this virtual rally in the state of Florida. And to Vice President Joe Biden, we're so delighted that you're here virtually. We look forward to you being here in person. Let me talk about something serious first. Let me talk about the fact that we have this pandemic that has plagued our country and our world. And this has shown us more than any other example, I think, the importance of steady, honest, dependable leadership. We don't have it right now. We can have it in about six months. All we have to do is support our friend, your friend, Joe Biden, the former vice president of the United States, because he's the right man for the moment and the time. He's got the experience. He certainly has the heart. He's got the temperament and he's got the decision making capability. He simply is a good man. I've worked with his administration when I was governor of the state. I remember the BP oil spill. I remember working through the Great Recession with the Obama-Biden administration, reaching across the aisle to do what's right for Florida and do what's right for America. That is the strength of this man. He has the courage of his convictions to do what's right each and every time. Let me tell you about Florida and how important she is. And you all know this. Florida is the third largest state in the country, the largest battleground state in the country. Over the past almost 30 years, nobody has gotten to the White House without winning our Florida first. So it's this simple. You win Florida, you become president of the United States of America. And what's at stake here? As the vice president says himself, the soul of our country. This is a fight for the soul of America. My fellow Floridians, if we do everything right, we get a dependable, honest, wonderful man with a good heart and great empathy and tremendous compassion. We need that in the White House. The most powerful person in the world has to be a human being with compassion, empathy, and understanding and love. We elect Joe Biden, we get all of that. 
we are going to be in simpatico as a state with this great man and this great future president. If we do our part, Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States, and God's going to be happy for it. God bless you all. Let's all work hard. Thank you so very much. Please welcome Congresswoman Kathy Castor. Hi, everybody. It's great to be with so many friends and neighbors. Uh, we're here to give Joe Biden a warm Tampa Bay area welcome. But let me start by saluting all of our frontline heroes who are out there on the front lines, keeping us safe so that we all can stay, stay healthy. Um, it's so fabulous to be with everyone to, to kick off the virtual campaigning for Joe Biden. You know, around here in Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay area, we know Joe Biden and we trust Joe Biden. Um, we know Joe Biden to be a man of humble beginnings, has suffered setbacks and tragedies. You know, a lot of people can relate to that right now. Uh, we, know, we know Joe is an empathetic and caring man who stands up for working people. We need that right now, too. We know Joe listens to scientists and public health experts, and America is in dire need of that skill right now, more than ever before. You know, I'm humbled uh, to have served in the Congress representing my hometown of Tampa for a number of years, and I was here at the time when Joe Biden helped lead us out of the Great Recession and fought for students, schools, teachers, firefighters, police officers, fought for clean energy and affordable housing. Uh, they saved a lot of jobs, and I think we're going to have to get right back at it again. Uh, in Florida, more neighbors signed up for affordable health care under the Affordable Care Act than any other state in the country. And I'm all in for Joe Biden because he wants to strengthen affordable health care. Uh, meanwhile, Donald Trump announced yesterday he wants to rip it away. Now, what is he saying to our neighbors with a pre-existing condition like cancer or asthma or, God forbid, coronavirus right now? It's vitally important that we stand up with Joe Biden, that we go fight the good fight with him. Uh, I'm all in, Joe, and uh, God bless you for starting off here in Florida. We've got your back. Thanks. Please welcome the president of the Black Nurses Association of Tampa Bay, Rosa McKenzie Cambridge. Greetings, everyone. Thank you, uh, Representative Castro. It is uh, indeed an honor to be here with such great heroes. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the virtual uh, rally. I am uh, a nurse here in Tampa, uh, and I appreciate uh, Representative Castro's support for the frontliners, and not just the frontliners, but for the community at large and the United States. Uh, I had an early calling on my life to be a nurse, working in the community, taking care of people, and it is a great passion and to see my heroes and sheroes, fellow workers on the front line and this pandemic atmosphere, loving and caring and sacrificing each and every day gives me inspiration to fight the fight for the least of us. We need to have uh, more compassion and uh, great leadership in the White House, someone that cares about the people like Joe Biden does. Joe Biden, uh, Vice President Joe Biden and uh, President Obama made history. Uh, I signed for health care called the ACA, Obamacare. And we, we need to build on that instead of tearing it down. We need to expand it. We cannot stand for them to right now work on dismantling this great uh, effort by President Obama and Vice President Biden. It is historical. It takes care of millions of people. And in this pandemic atmosphere, to have people that are not able to get accessible uh, 
quality health care is really, really a problem. I am really, really passionate about having accessible health care, affordable health care for each and every individual. We need to put into place leaders like my friend, Congressman Castro, who takes it and runs and and she works tirelessly for this community and for the United States of America. And now I'd like to introduce you to a short video and to a great hero, a compassionate person that will bring compassion and leadership back into no other than the next, next president of the United States of America, Joe Biden. Who are we? We are the ones who step up for each other. I've got your back. You've got mine. Kindness, humility, empathy. It's not just talk. It's who we are. It's who we always have been. And no one can take that from us. The movement to bring it back, it started here. And here. And here in school gymnasiums, community centers, the living room down the block. You'll be where? Okay, we'll be there. Who are we? We're the movement that will beat Donald Trump. Welcome. We're going to have to sweat for it. We're going to have to sacrifice and fight. We're going to have to lead, everyone is going to have to lead with kindness, humility, empathy, and not just talk, but action. Action today, action tomorrow. Action until we win, and we will win if we do this together. It's who we are, it's who we always have been. Now let's show them. Please welcome Vice President Joe Biden. Hey, good evening, Tampa. Thanks so much for tuning in. I wish we could have done this together and it gone a little more smoothly, but, uh, but I'm grateful we we're able to connect virtually. And thank you, Rosa, for your kind introduction and for the heroic work that you and the Black Nurses Association are doing to meet this moment. I'm so grateful to you and to Congresswoman Castro, as well as Charlie Chris, my buddy, and State Senator Cruz, remarkable leaders are all stepping up for the people of the community in this community right now. You know, I hope that all of you who are joining us tonight and your families are staying safe and healthy. This is an incredibly anxious moment for our communities, for our nation, and quite frankly, for the world. And my prayers are with all those who are scared, those who are sick and grieving and are struggling to get by. You know, as we speak tonight, more than 75,000 Americans have lost their lives in this pandemic. The toll is so immense, it can be hard for us to truly grasp the scale of the tragedy. You know, we aren't equipped to come face to face with such staggering losses, but we have to, we must. For each one of those lives is an American story cut short. It's a family shattered, a community deprived of something unique and essential. And it's a really hard truth to admit, but if we're honest with ourselves, we know that it'll take us a, a generation to truly heal from this disaster. You know, this is infuriating because more than that, it's heartbreaking. You know, I think about how much fear, how much loss, how much agony could have been avoided if President Trump hadn't wasted so much time getting started. The warning signs were mounting in January. I was raising the alarm back then and so were others, including the intelligence community, the federal intelligence community, the CIA and others. But Trump was warned more than a dozen times this was coming. He knew he couldn't have been developing, he could have been developing an, an, an adequate test and deploying them. He could have marshaled supplies and invoked the Defense Production Act to ensure that every community was ready. You know, we could have been bracing the public to act quickly in order to slow the spread. Instead, we got denials, delays, and distractions. You know, 
we got ball faced lies about our testing capacity. That quote, this was his quote, anybody who wants a test can get it, end of quote. That wasn't remotely true two months ago, and it still isn't. We've got promises that, quote, one day, this is like a miracle, it will disappear. Well, he had months and months to take action, to lead with urgency, but he did nothing except make false promises and dismiss the experts. Now 75,000 Americans are gone and more than 33 million have filed for unemployment. Millions more are struggling to pay their bills. Small businesses dreamed up at the kitchen table, fought for and made real, have been snuffed out. And this president can summon barely a word, barely a word of empathy, of responsibility, of regret. There is no indication whatsoever that he understands the depth of the pain and the loss this crisis has brought. At the same time, this pandemic is exploiting the gaps of inequity that have always existed in our society. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's wrenching open the disparities and injustices that we've allowed to fester. You know, it's estimated that 90% of African-American-owned businesses were shut out of the first wave of relief, not because the relief package was racist on its face, but because of pre-existing systematic disparity, disparities in our lending, our lending system. You know, we should be designing our economic response to avoid these desperate outcomes. And they're not only desperate, they're, they're, they affect people in so many different ways. So the funds can actually reach people in communities and small businesses, you know, that, that they're supposed to be helping. We should be reversing half, half of what of the mistakes have been gone. We should make sure that relief funds go to small businesses with 50 or fewer employees. By the way, 90% of minority-owned and women-owned businesses fall under that category, 50 employees or less. We should be ensuring that every single American has access to affordable health care, including Medicare-like plan if they want it. And we should make sure that health costs related to COVID-19 are completely free. Now, this crisis is really so much about our society including just how critical it is to have competence in government. In Florida, more than 1.7 million have filed for unemployment support, but over 70% of them have been ignored. In the thick of this crisis, Florida has the worst rate of fulfilling unemployment claims of any state in the country. It's no surprise the unemployment system was allowed to uh, be hollowed out by Governor Scott back in 2011. It was slashed to the bone. And you're now seeing the results. It's un unconscionable. Families are struggling. Every single day, day matters. We have to get help to people who need help. We got to get it efficiently, equitably, and immediately. You know, <clears throat> it's often said that crisis reveals character. And this crisis revealed just how dangerous and incompetent Donald Trump and his enablers have been. You know, in the cold light of day, we're seeing the cost of his vanity, his paranoia, his refusal to face the truth. We're seeing a man completely overwhelmed by the moment, who doesn't have the team, the temperament, or quite frankly, the moral authority to meet this test. Tragically, we're seeing the truth that he doesn't place high enough value on American lives to make the right calculations, the right choices. His priorities are elsewhere, and it shows. Thankfully, however, we're seeing something else right now. In the absence of presidential leadership, we're seeing the soul of the American people shine through. We're seeing doctors and nurses, EMTs and other healthcare providers selflessly put themselves in line and some actually give their lives to fight this virus and protect our communities. We're seeing grocery store workers, delivery drivers, public transit workers, too often our lowest paid workers, carry this country on their backs. And we're seeing Americans step up for one another in meaningful ways, picking up groceries from a vulnerable neighbor, reaching out with video calls to check on a friend who might be having a hard time. All across the country, we're seeing the outpouring of gratitude for our care providers as communities come together to thank them and celebrate their work. You know, that's who we are as Americans, big hearted, selfless, ready to raise to any challenge, any challenge, we're capable of overcoming any threat. This moment can be and must be a 
a stirring reminder that we are we are a country that is really all about the American people. We have an opportunity to show the world and to prove to ourselves what Americans are capable of, what America's best at. We're going to take an extraordinary amount of work, and we're going to do it, not just to rebuild our country, but to transform it, to finally invest in our workers, because we know just how essential they truly are now, to create a more just and inclusive economy where everyone, everyone has an opportunity to build a better life for their families, to make sure everyone in this country earns a living wage and is treated with dignity and respect. And we have to be strong and resilient. But we also have to have a strong and resilient safety net to keep us going during hard times. You know, our view right now may be limited to the backyard, to the basement, to the screens of our devices. But I hope you see what I see. Because even through this terrible thing we're going through, we're separated physically, the enduring difficult times. Even through all this, I see a nation ready to come together. Tampa will not be broken. Our communities will not be broken. Our country will not be broken, not by this pandemic, not by anything, as long as we stand united. Americans are tough, resilient, we're resourceful. So we may be down now, but we're not out. It's always been a bad bet to bet against America. We're gonna get through this. And we can come out the other side so much stronger, so much kinder so much closer, more just, more resilient than we've ever been before. You need to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's nothing, nothing we cannot accomplish if we work together. And come this November, we're going to prove it by working together now. Thank you, Tampa. Thank you all for being part of this movement. And God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you again.